Hey, thanks for watching. We're back at Joby's Hats to talk about felt hats this time. Awesome. What do we got here? This is a Rodeo King Sapphire. Okay. 10X. Pretty, co pretty color hat. Yeah, it's not More a bad looking hat. Yeah. So walk us through what's the best way to clean your hat if you're at home and you need, uh, you know, you got, a, you got a night out, you're going to the, you know, maybe a concert and you need a clean hat or you're going to church, you just want to brush your hat off. What, what's the best way to keep this clean? Okay, there's, there's different ways to clean your hat, your felt hat, uh, especially this time of the year when it starts getting colder already and cooler weather you know, approaches us and ready to wear that felt hat. Get out of the box and you get you know things like this where you get hair, fuzz, stuff all over your hat. If you don't have you know the cleaning supplies at home, you can use just tape. Okay. Tape works. It gets all the hairs. If you have a cat, if you have a dog, whatever it gets in your hat, you can get this off, and I'll show you how. We'll, okay. We'll get that off. So, real quick though, what uh, so what is this stuff? I you know I've got a can at home. I've, we've used it in in the um, the store many many times. It's what, what is it exactly? It's what this is is foam. It's a cleaner in the form of a foam. Mm -hmm. You spray it, and that foam, what it does is sucks the dust out of the material. Okay. Okay. That's all there is. There's really, it doesn't have any grease. It doesn't have anything. You know, it's just it's just foam. Spray it on your hat, and it gets the dust out of the material, out of the out of the hair. Okay. And and tape will do the same thing. Tape will get just the uh, fuzz, okay. fuzz hairs out of it. This will give it a, a nice newer look, especially on black hats. This is just for dark colors. There's two sprays. There's one for dark, there's one for light. You can use this on, 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 a, on, a, on a blue, uh, black, chocolate. You can use it on all the dark colors. So I've said I've got a can of this at home. I never use it on my hats. Um, I, I always use a brush and, and maybe uh, a lint roller. Yeah, lint roller is pretty much what this is. It's just yeah. a tape. So it works great. What you want to do first is get all the hairs and dust off the hat. And I'm going to show you how we do it. You know, you don't need a lot and it can be any tape, either the clear tape, painter's tape, the blue tape. Um, as long it. as it's going to pull that stuff off. Exactly. Of right, so we get this, uh, just a long show about that much. Okay. Just make it into a roll like that and just tap. So you don't want to you don't want to kind of rub it. You you can depending on the hat. You know it it doesn't do anything. Say so you can you can rub it. You know you can do that. You can, a, you, you can do both ways. So there's a big kind of concern um, on these internet groups about the way the felt is laid, and it, it's kind of laid in a clockwise pattern on the hat. Does that really make any difference? No. No, not not the way that it's. If the hat is sanded good, it doesn't matter which way the hairs go. Because they're using a vibrating sander on that thing yeah. anyway. So they're, not, yeah. they're not just kind of going with the grain. So see, so it gets, it gets most of that dust off of it. Okay, so you can get it, you know, all over your hat. And that's a good point right here, because you see a lot of this blue on there. And that's because this is a new hat, newer hat, right? That's correct. And so anytime you get a new hat, it's been sanded. And it's going to take a long time for all of that, that dust from the hat to get out of there. Yeah. So so it's going to be a dusty process, and if you're putting stickers on it, you know that's kind of that's another thing. It's gonna yeah. it's gonna clog up those stickers. Yep. Yep. So that's that's that. So see, if you just do this at home, you're ready to go, church, a wedding, a bar, quick little cleanup, and you're good to go. Now, if you have the cleaner, I recommend a brush, the hair, the the horse hair brush. That's an old one right there. There's an old one. Yeah, I had this <laughs> probably about 15 years, so probably longer than that. So they so, last a long time. They and do. They're only about fifteen dollars, right? So um, how much? Are they? They're nineteen dollars. Okay. But this brush can last you up to thirty years, and we have one hanging from a wall. I had to retire the poor thing for twenty-five years. I had it, and I put it on the on the wall of fame. So, so I show you. So, I I started doing this a long time ago, where I put steam, but you don't have to put steam. Okay, you can just use it directly on the hat, and I will show you. What you want to do is create a mist. I see a lot of guys where they do chunks on the hat. That can be dangerous because it's foam, but it's got chemicals in there. So it's air pressure in there. Sometimes you can leave marks on your hat. So you want to do is start with the mist around and I'll show you, okay? You don't want to start directly on the hat. Start on the side and then go like this. You see that? You create a mist and the keys do not let that foam dry on the hat, 
Okay. Give it about five seconds, then start getting it off. Why I do that? Because it can leave marks on your hat. So those bubbles are kind of just exactly bringing that out. That's right. So those bubbles, what they do is they, they get that dirt off the material. See? And it gives you a really nice clean. You can do it with just one time or you can repeat if you want to do it again. Same thing for the bottom part. Spray not directly on the hat and then just quickly do it like that. We just do a mist. See the foam is doing its job. It's sucking all the dust out of the material. Okay. So now you clean the hat. And it's done. Ready for the rodeo. Ready for the rodeo. Ready to go to dinner. So now, what? a lot of guys, let me say this now, because a lot of guys use these sponges, it's fine. But if you use them your 100X, 40X, 20X, even your 10X, every time you rub, and I'm gonna show you, hold that sure. for me. There's actually some stuff in the material right now. I don't know if you can see that. Oh. Show this one here, right here, this camera. Yeah, all the black stuff on there, all that stuff comes off. I don't know if you can see it on the flying. So that's what you're taking out of your hat. You're taking that the the finish off of it. So you're taking all that all that protective, what do you say like fur, I guess. Yeah. So and, it, and it's gonna make it rough. This is for oh, like really? it's this, is, make it this rough. is this is for your cheaper hats. Okay. Wool, four X, six X. Okay. So I I do have I have a sponge. I have sponges at the house. Um, I've got brushes, sponges. I've got everything. Obviously, you know that you need for for cleaning a hat. And I, I don't ever use a sponge. What I've found a sponge good for is water spots. If you if you go out in a, a chocolate, my chocolate gets water spots really bad. 200X chocolate, you go out and get rained on and it shows those little water spots when it dries. I use that, it takes it right out. Yeah, they do, they do. <laughs> and, and now that you're saying water spots, you know, what happens if your hat gets rained on? Good point. So it, it all depends on your hat, on the X quality that you buy. This is when the X factor comes in hand. A lot of people be like, well, my 4X, you know, it'll do the job, it'll hold the rain. Yeah, but if it gets completely wet, it's going to get deformed. <laughs> it's, it's, it's At the end mess. of the day, your hat's going to be all <laughs> the way down. And that's, and that's when you pay, you know, you get what you pay for. Spend on a 100X, 100% beaver, the hat is going to do great with the weather. With rain, nothing's going to happen to it. So my, my 40X Black American is my, my rain hat or umbrella. It's 40X. You know, it kind of holds up well and it's black. So it doesn't show anything. If there's, if there's water spots, you don't have to deal with it. Yeah. You know, you're so right. that's, if I know it's going to rain. Now it's different on the silver bellies uh, or whites. All these hats, they put powder on them. Okay. On the sanding process, most of them get powdered. Not all of them, but some of them will get that, this powdered over your hat. So when the water hits it, you're going to get that watermark on there. So it's going to be hard to get it off. So on a silver belly, it's going to be really depending on how your hat is, how much powder is on your hat. It, it doesn't matter if it's a thousand X, 500 X. So just be careful with that. With the light color hats, it's going to be crazier with the beer stains, you know, with the rain, it's just regular rain. You might get those watermarks and it won't come off. Go with the natural. Go maybe. with the natural. Yeah. Or just, if you know it's going to be raining, you know, we sell the little hat covers. Those are always coming handy. Put it on your hat and oh, you're good man. to go. I hear it now. Those the, the internet guys are saying, "What? It's a hat. You don't want to put a raincoat no. on your hat. Just don't wear a hat." Yeah, Come no, on, and man. I and I get it. You know, and like I said, all all the guys out there that work in ranches and they work in cattle, no problem. Wear your hat and your hat is good to go. But your hat is not going to be clean. So and it's good. You know, everybody wear the hat however you want to wear it. You know, like it's a hat. You're right. You know, <laughs> if you paid eight hundred dollars for a hat, you're going to wear it out in the ranch all day. Perfect. It's your hat. Exactly. It's your hat. You wear it how you want. And don't don't worry about how somebody else takes care of their hat. Yeah, that's right. If you want to have your dirty and full of <laughs> all kinds of stuff on your hat, that's perfect. It looks good, too. You know, we respect that. Yeah, cow shit looks great on it. Hey, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but, you know, it's, it's always we're just doing this video for the for the guys that that don't know how to take care of the hat or the or wondering how to take care of a hat. There's for, a lot of first new time buyers. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, there's a lot of new people. You know, uh, hats are really popular right now, and a lot of the new people have no idea what they're doing. 
we've talked about this before. I talked about this on our podcast uh, last week. You know, a lot of these guys don't even know what's the front and what's the back. So, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. a lot of the new people need this kind of information. That's so right. This That's is right. very helpful. We really appreciate you showing us. Yeah. Um, okay. So water spots. Um, is my way of doing it okay? Is it, is that the best way to do it? To get water spots out, just use a brush, uh, um, a sponge, or what's what's your suggestion yeah, you on can, water spots? You, you can you can use a sponge. Um, you can even use the uh, the baby wipe. You really? know, you can use a baby wipe. Um, the baby uh, we use these things for everything, and we recommend having this with you on on, on your truck on the car. If you have a nicer hat that you want to take care of, and you're wondering, you know, hey, what happens if I get beer or you know icing from a cake or oh, makeup 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 huge. something like that use the baby wipe okay just use this have it with you in the car if you, something happens you get beer or any any kind of stain use the baby wipe and just rub that stain out of there okay and it's going to get wet yes but it's going to dry it's going to be just fine so what you want to do is you want to suck the stain and transfer it into this wipe Okay. So it's not it really pushing it into the hat. Exactly. Then. You're just rubbing it out. Now, the key is don't let it dry. I, I get a lot of guys that, well, I went out, you know, six months ago and I got beer on my hat. Well, you waited six months. That beer stain is on your hat forever now. But if you just do it within a couple of hours or even a couple of days, you can still use that wipe and get that beer stain, blood stain, makeup, whatever the case is, you can get out of there, including your sweat. If you go out, and you dance all night and you, your hat, your straw hat or your felt hat is completely sweated out, use that wipe and just rub it all over. Get that salt out of the material. And you can also do your band inside and it's safe. So a lot of, a lot of speaking of bands, there's a lot of times we'll see a hat come in and they've got paper towels wadded up and put under here. In my opinion, that's not the best way to do it. What do you suggest? We use two different um, most people use that because a hat is too big. Yeah. So we use foam and we use tape. Okay. I'm going to show you how to use the tape. I don't know. Can you see it on the camera if I put it down here? Yes, you're right here. Okay. There you go. So what we're going to do is you bring your sweatband out like that. Okay. We normally recommend putting it on the back side and the front side. Okay. A little section, probably about six inches or five inches long. Okay, and put it in between the band and the hat, half and half, just like this. Okay, just like that. Bring it in, and what that does is, is it creates a gap in between the hat and the sweatband, and it gives you about an eighth of an inch smaller. And that's what makes it fit better. It's it's absolutely amazing how much room that little bit of tape oh, takes yeah. up. People will say, what's that going to do? That's not going to do anything. No, it's, it it's really big. And it, it works. It takes a ton of room out of that hat. And It works better than foam, to be honest. Absolutely. And you can, use, uh, you can use two pieces in the front, even three or four in the back if it's really, really big. And that'll bring it down almost a size and a half down. Awesome. You know, so it's, it's, it works pretty good. And or that or the traditional foam, put it in the front, put it in the back. But, you know, it's just the foam sometimes creates wrinkles on your sweatband. Right. That doesn't look that good, but, you know. So what about makeup? We talked about this in our straw video. What about the makeup? When a lady wears a hat and she gets makeup on the sweatband. Yeah. When you get home, here again. Grab your baby wipe or just a, a, a damp towel and clean it really, really good in the inside to get that makeup out of there. Because that's also really dangerous when you stack another hat on top of another hat. You get those, we call them sweat rings on your hat. That's really hard to get off. I've seen it. And so you never want to stack anything on your felt. Never. If you do, you can put a, a, a bag over it. Just any kind of bag. Even if it's a bag from the grocery store, put a bag, put a felt or straw, and it's safe. You're still gonna see a little mark in there, but it will come right off. But once you get that sweat stain, it's done. That's a good way to ruin a hat. So I, I don't know if we actually touched on this before. What are some good um, 
items for care and maintenance that you should have at home. A brush, just a brush? Definitely. Brush and, and I recommend your, your horse hair brush as a must. If you got a lot of black hats, you know, and it works, it goes, it works good on a steel, on the chocolate, on the black, on the midnight blue, on the black cherry, anything dark, it'll work. Okay, so your foam, brush, and if you wanna, if you have a lot of light hats, then get you a light hat. Now this is a must. So your two brushes, yep. your black cleaner, two sponges, and you're good. I don't think we talked about that, but why do you use a white brush and a black brush? Okay, so if you use a black hat, when you dust it, you're gonna get all the dark stains on your hat. Okay, your hat, like I said, we talk about the powder, same thing on the blacks. So when you brush it, you might get some of that on your tip of your brush. So you don't wanna use this on your cereal belly. Right, okay? you're gonna have you get a that. Hat. Yeah, so <laughs> that's what we always recommend to use two different brushes. Use your light only for your light. Same thing with this hat. If you use this on, your, on a white hat, all that white stuff. And if you notice, actually, you know, it's, it, yeah, there's this powder see. coming out of there, white powder. So if you use that on your dark color hat, you're gonna get powder all over your hat. I know we're gonna get this question. There's absolutely no difference in these two brushes. It's just to let you know which one's which. Yeah, that's it. Same thing when you buy this, this guys, there's two in a package. That's why there's two. You use it on your light color hats. It looks, it'll always look like that. And you, this one was like that color at one point, but because we use it on black now, it looks darker, but it's, they were both the same color when we started it. If you don't think you're gonna remember, put them in a Ziploc bag and label them. That's right. <laughs> yeah, but um, we also get this question asked a lot. What happens if I leave my truck in the dash of my truck? Okay, if, it's, if the weather is below 70, you're fine. Nothing's gonna happen to your hat. If the weather is above 80 degrees or is, is hot and the sun is super hot, you leave it on your dash. This is real leather. It's gonna shrink. Right. It's gonna shrink and it can shrink up to two sizes. <laughs> we get this all the time. These hats are made with heat. So when that heat, the sun hits the material, it gets activated. And this hat is gonna go down and it can get all wavy and it can get ruined pretty much. It's a natural fiber. It's, it's like, Think of your wool sweater. If you put your wool sweater in a dryer, it's going to come out 16 times yep. smaller than it yep. went, went in, you know? So it's it's going to shrink. And the newer they are, I've found, the more they're going to shrink. That's right. Now, And we even recommend this on hats that, that fit too big. If you have a hat that fits just too big, and no matter how much tape you put on there, leave it on your dash for about 20 minutes. <laughs> then put it back on, and it, it'll shrink enough where it's going to fit you perfect. Interesting. Don't, don't, I don't recommend this really, <laughs> but it's, it's another option to do it. This is, I've done it for, for a few hats of mine and, and, and it works. He's not buying you another hat's what he's Yeah, saying. exactly. You ruin it, you're done. <laughs> no, just kidding. So guys, and this is just something that I do on my 25 years of experience that I've learned, you know, different brands, different people, everything changes all the time. So use your own judgment, you know, don't, just go out and put all your hats on the dash for your truck tonight or tomorrow, you know, so just use your common sense and every hat is different. So these hats can be extremely expensive. This is a thousand X you're wearing right now. I can tell because the bling is hitting me in the eye right here <laughs> off that buckle set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they can be really expensive. We have seasons for felt and straw. And when it's straw season, you want to put your felts away. How do you, what's the best way to store a felt hat? Okay. Especially you, the more expensive ones. If you have your original box, leave it in the box, put it in the box upside down with no bag. This is very important. No bag because that bag is gonna create condensation and it's gonna create heat. A lot of people are like, well, I'll put it on my closet. If there's humidity in your closet from the heater, your hat is gonna get not ruined, but it, the shape is going to be messed up when you get out of the box. You can have mold too if you. It have can have mold, yeah, 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 definitely. So, I, I always recommend put them in the box with no bag. That way, you can just let it air at room temperature, and it's good to go. Okay, interesting. I so or if you have a hat rack, just leave it on your rack. 
and just just let it sit there. Well, is it going to collect dust? Yes, but you can just take that off. Absolutely. Um, you know, I I kind of foresaw that coming. You know, somebody's going to say, well, it's going to get dusty. You know, you know, over the course of six eight months. It really comes off easy, especially the higher the X factor, the, it's the, that grain is really tight and mm -hmm. the dust just comes off. Yeah, and that's why it's important to have your, your brush and just dust it. You can even get it out three months before fell season just to kind of give it a pre-cleaning. So just a quick little brush and see how the hat is and then put it back in the box, put it back in your rack or whatever. You know, I learned too that when you hang them on a wall, say for example, this is the wall, they hang. Yes. We talk about the same thing, we're putting it down like that. The weight, the natural hat of the weight is going to create your hat to lose that dip. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't matter how many X's. Eventually, you're going to lose that dip and your hat is going to be flat. Another thing I've seen is when you hang it, um, if, it if it's hung like that, then it's pushing against the wall and you'll, you'll you get that get, meal kick. Yeah. What we call the meal kick. Yeah. I've seen that many times and that's. You know, that's a trip to the hat store for sure. Yeah, and and let's 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 talk about that right quick. Straw season, fell season. Okay. Yeah. It's everybody like, oh my God, why are you wearing a straw? Why are you wearing a felt? Look, a hat is a hat. You can really wear whatever you want. It's really, there's no law that tells you you must wear a hat. Now, the the Texas law, not really <laughs> a law, but it's it's after uh, Easter you wear your straw, okay, and after Labor Day you wear your felt. But here in Texas, we were 105 just two weeks ago, yes. and we're in the middle of October. Absolutely. So, you know, yeah, I get it, but you can still wear your straw, and you'll be fine. You know, we we normally would do it whenever the change, when whatever the weather would change to a cooler weather. That's when we get our felts out for us. Yeah, I and I'll wear a felt. Um, unless unless I'm going to be outside, I'm going to wear a felt. Um, you know, for more formal, formal occasions inside. Yeah. Felt is always your more formal option. And, and that's what I was going to say. You, you, your felt is, is your dress hat. You can wear it in the summer. You can wear it anywhere. You can go to church, to a party, to a nice dinner. You can definitely wear your felt all year round if you want to. It's it's fine. But you, your felt is, is mainly for dress. Yeah, There are cowboys who wear um, felt year round. Year round. Or straws year round. I have a Absolutely. lot of guys that do cattle that work, you know, they're in a, in a horse, you know, 300 days out of the year. And they all wear straws, you know, yeah. all year round. And because they, they like it, it's lighter, it's cooler for them, you know, and it works. You know, as long as you wear your hat and you're happy with it, that's all that matters. One thing I wanted to talk about real quick is um, bugs. So something new for me, I've been putting little cedar planks in my hat boxes uh, when I'm storing the felts through the summer. What do you think about bugs? Have you seen any issue with bugs, uh, people coming in and bringing them? And I, I have, and, and that happens when we put the, the hat inside of the bag, in the box, in a, in a humid place, like your closet, your garage, where there's humid, there's moths. Okay. Moths will get on there and we'll, they'll leach your hat up that's, to, to that's the ground. <laughs> I've seen day. some. I've seen them where they, customers bring a hat and they think there's a hat in there. And they're like, see, it's just a band. <laughs> really? Seriously, I've seen it. And I've seen a hat one time where the the whole hat was gone <laughs> into pieces. Because brought you a hat. Brought me a hat. They thought it was a hat inside. There was nothing. Wow. Yeah, those that's why it's important to leave your hat, especially this type of the, you know, felts. Don't leave them where there's humidity because that'll that'll get really bad pretty quick. Is the same thing with wool? A wool hat? Does it? Um, no, no, just just mainly uh, beaver or rabbit. Okay. Fur. Mm -hmm. All right. What? Um, so, let's talk real quick about the difference between uh, a rabbit fur and a beaver and a rabbit and beaver blend. What's so? What's the real difference there? And and what? Who's say who's going to wear a seven X versus who's going to wear a thousand X or a hundred X? Well, you know, there, there's a lot of questions about that. And this is, you know, it depends on the company. The company's not going to like me right now. But, <laughs> hey, but you know what? Well, they should be doing this video then. Right? A, a 7X, it should be a 7% beaver on the hat. That's what the 7X means. The rest can be just different types of furs, you know, like rabbit or buffalo or cashmere, whatever they're putting on these hats. But the X is, that's what we're supposed to mean. 7X, 7%, 10X, 10%, and that's when it gets to the 100X. 
that's supposed to be 100% beaver. <laughs> now, is it really 100% beaver? Most likely not. Most of these hats are not going to be 100% beaver because they just, it makes it so hard to, to shape, you know? So they're going to have a little bit of rabbit in there. Even if it says, even a mink, it's still going to have a little bit of rabbit fur in there. Okay. You know, so just very important, you know, and not, it depends on your brand, depends on the where they're buying the hat from, you know, so I can really, and there's really no way to know. Let's talk about the sizing. We talked about this in our straw video. What's, how do you know what size you are? What's the long oval, round oval, regular oval? What does that really mean? What that really means is, it's, it's the hat, if it comes in an oval, there's three. There's oval, long oval, and round. Most of our hats, 90% of them are round, just because they're so much easier to make long. So you steam them, you see? And just like that, you can make it longer. And even the natural shape of the brim, when we bring the size up, it'll make it longer, okay? So the hat I'm wearing, it was a round oval. It's a Joby hat. Yeah. Um, it, I am an extra long oval and it fits perfectly you can i don't know if you can see yeah you can see the difference see this is more round and that's long already you can see the difference on the hat yeah. and like i said and all these felt hats are so much easier to to mold you know i have a lot of guys that are like extra round so i mean it's you have to go this way so it just depends on really how your head is okay and that, that when somebody orders a hat, I don't even know if we're getting in the weeds here, maybe. <laughs> somebody orders a hat, you have to shape it the best you can. Yeah. You know, and if your head is crooked, that hat's going to be crooked. That hat's going to be crooked. Now, normally what we do is we just shape it to the center of the hat, okay? And 90% of the time, yeah, it's going to be perfect. And 10% of the time, it's going to be crooked. If the, if it does happen, if you ship it to you in Oregon or something like that, and you don't have a hat shaper near you, that's going to be a problem. But if you have a just a local guy that can tweak a hat, it, it, it doesn't take much to really just change the brim a little bit. You know what I mean? So it should be an easy fix. So what happens if you have a hat that's just really too tight? And, you know, you've got a couple of options, right? You can stretch it. But when you stretch it, that 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 block for stretching, it it's only about that tall. And you kind of get this ring. If you have to stretch it really, really high, you'll get this ring around the side of it. That's crown. right. Well, and and you really, on, honestly, all you want to stretch is just the leather part. The, the, the leather part, sorry. Because that's really what's the only part that's going to stretch. Because your head is not going to be all the way up here on the crown. So, for example, you leave your hat in the dash of your truck. And it shrunk. You know, I get we get these calls all the time. Hey, man, my hat shrunk. How do I stretch it? I'm going to show you how to cut the wire on your sweatband because there's a little piping in there. Sometimes it's made out of metal or sometimes it's made out of plastic, but that piping is in there. It's in this little black section there. So I'm going to show you how to snap it. Okay. It's actually a, it's called a size retainer yeah. and it's, it, it's to help the hat not shrink not sh or, or maintain the size, maintain the size, maintain the size. That's what it's meant. That's what it's meant for. Okay. So I'm going to show you right here. Okay, all you want to cut is just the black. Just a little bit. There you go. All you want to do is just cut the black part. Okay, and you're gonna hear that that snapping. You heard that? Yep. So that that click would cut the piping in there. We cut that piping in there, and now the hat can stretch. Okay, this will stretch. This this part will stretch. Yeah. This the piping in there is cut now. So now the hat is going to stretch. Now, obviously, you're going to have to wear it a few times, force it on your head. But now we we'll cut that wire in there. And that's not going to damage anything. It's not going to damage the hat. It's not going to, nothing's going to happen to it. You can, you can, you can't even tell that it's there. So if, it, it's, if it's, it's already too small, yeah. what, what are you going to hurt, right? Yeah. So after this, you can just put it on. So you go again. If it's hot outside, put it on, go mow the yard, and you'll be all right. Again, these are suggestions. He's not buying you a new hat. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So yeah, that's it. You cut the wire and the hat will stretch. Awesome. Not much, but at least half a size. Cool. Yeah. What else do we need to know about felt hats and care and maintenance? Anything? Man, just just wear them. You know, wear your hats. Your, your hats are, man, are meant to be worn and just, if you are the type of guy that go out every night, just wear them. You know, just 
have your cleaning supplies near you. You can always dust them off. If you're the kind of guy that would just want to wear them all dirty and when it's done, buy a new one, then do it, you know? So we talked about this, this is thousand X hat and obviously you're wearing it for the video. We're wearing hats for the video. I wear a hat all the time. You wear ball caps and hats, but you do wear a thousand X in here cleaning hats. Oh yeah, I wear them all the time. And I, by the end of the day, my hat is filthy. And what I do is I just grab a black brush, dust it off and good to go. We used to do it actually where we'll wear, uh, all the guys will wear a hat and not clean it for the whole fill season. <laughs> and within a month or two months, they're like, never mind, I'm gonna go ahead and clean it because they get pretty, pretty filthy cleaning hats here. I have, you know, I have had to sand um, silver bellies. I've had to sand black hats while wearing, you know, a silver belly. I've had to sand a silver belly while wearing a black hat. You know, it, yeah. it, that one time, it'll cover an entire hat. Yeah, and that happens, you know, when you cut a brim, you get that flat look on your brim. So we use sanding on both sides to make it sharp and make it, you know, like new again. And all that dust, man, just gets on your hat. So we... Have, we... That's another good point while we're still talking about it. Um, I've seen a lot of times where places will kind of cut the brim and send a guy out without sanding it. Is that something that somebody can do at home or do you recommend? You can do it at home, definitely. Um, you can just go down to your nearest hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever, gra uh, get some sandpaper, get the like 220, the real fine, and just sand your edges. Now you have to do it in an angle so you get it that way you can get a smooth finish so it's not flat or it's not too sharp. You want to have just that original uh, factory finish. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, this is something, don't be scared because when you start sanding that, it's going to have hair all over the place and you're going to think you just destroyed a hat. It's going to it's gonna be a mess. It's going to, it's not taking a lot off of there. That, that felt is really compact. It is. So, so there's a ton of fur yeah, it's, in this it's, hat. it's compressed hair and it's not i mean you can and it also worked for i don't know if you guys have some older hats do you have a little bit of i get this all the time that people think that the felt is coming off that's a great point because yeah. i hear that all the time no oh, the felt's worn off it's a hat it's fur all the way it's through. compressed hair nothing can come off so what that is is what we talked about earlier is the oil mm -hmm. makeup everything can get on here now when I say makeup is if you go out dancing or, you know, in this case, with you know, when you're taking it off and yep. you know, rubbing it in, you get this little right here and you can tell they almost look right shiny. Here. You can get that off with sandpaper. If, it depends on how you take your hat off. If you take your hat off like this, if you take your hat off like this, you're going to see that more in those areas yeah. where you take them off. Yeah. So, and that's just, it's grease that's kind of gotten into the pores <clears throat> and you sand a little bit and it's, it's gone. Yeah. And it's, like I said, you can use that sandpaper to clean um the edge of your brim if you have major stains in here use a little bit of the sandpaper first you know make sure that it doesn't change the color make sure it doesn't damage your hat because if you use that uh thicker grip you're gonna ruin your hat so <laughs> it's got to be a real fine sandpaper and if you're not comfortable just call bring, joby bring it in we'll do it for you you don't take anything like that um, over over the mail. You don't you don't take any any orders like that uh, for reshapes and, and um, the mail, do you? Not right now. Uh, honestly, we've been so busy with online, um, and then what happens is we get hats. Customers are like, "Oh, it just needs a little cleaning." <laughs> it, needs, it needs more than that. And then you know, usually customers are not being honest, and they'll they say, "Oh, it just needs a little cleaning." You know, it should be like ten bucks. No, it's, it's, you know, it takes us two or three days to clean it, and then we got to pay shipping back. So it's going to cost you, you know, at the end of the day, like 60 to 70 bucks to get your hat. And a lot of guys, honestly, don't want to pay that much. So, right. and, and not just that, but we're so behind on the online orders, and there's so many, there's so much stuff going around in the hat bar that we, the last year and a half, we haven't taken any outside hats. Okay. So, so if, you, if you're not comfortable doing it yourself, Try your local hat store. Yeah. See if they can give you a hand with that. More than likely, they're comfortable enough to yeah. clean a hat. Yeah. I mean, if you don't want to shape it, just they should be able to clean it. Now, be careful. Make sure that they don't spray anything crazy. Nothing. Oh, that... there's that swish and dip. What what is that? Uh, where they they take the hat and they they dunk it. What was that called? No, oh, I don't know what. Is yeah, it? don't don't do that. Or that. Yeah, if it's something crazy like that, honestly, don't and don't be embarrassed to tell your hat shaper. If they're doing something drastically wrong, 
tell them to stop. Don't wait till they finish ruining your hat and then try to bring it to somebody else to fix. Tell the guy, say, hey, you know what? Don't, I take my hat like that. Don't <laughs> do nothing. Don't be, don't be embarrassed. This, these hats are 500, 600, $1,000, even more. They cost pretty, a pretty penny. So don't let, you know, an ex, a, a, unexperienced hat shaper ruin your hat. Perfect. Hey, Joby, I thank you for, uh, you know, thank you for coming, telling us yeah. all of the, the, this information. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below and maybe we'll revisit this. We can, we can always do it. Yeah, you, you can, know, you can, too. you can also call the store and, um, if we can answer any questions, you know, um, we'll put the number here in the, yeah. on the, um, below and call us or, or send us a text. We can answer pretty much any question and follow Joby on Instagram, social media. You're on Facebook, Instagram, yeah. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, pretty much everything. Uh, Facebook and Instagram is Joby's hat store. TikTok and this Snapchat is Joby's Hats. And Joby posts every day um, new hats uh, that you've shaped, uh, new hats coming in for sale. There's always something on there. You, you know, I don't. You probably do 15, 20, you know, posts a day. Yeah, we're very active in social media. Uh, we try to post everything that we can. I mean, our customers love to see that. And, and so, if you're a Joby's customer, you tag Joby in it. You probably see yourself. We'll post on. you. Yeah. And nice also, day. I want to say something about the weekends, uh, guys. If you're from out of town. And if you come in on a Friday, Saturday, and a Sunday, please understand there's going to be a little bit of line, 45 minutes to an hour, sometimes two hour wait. You know, it's eight of us shaping hats, you know, nine of us when Joe comes shape with us. So it's, you know, we, we do the best that we can. If you're local in the DFW, we're open seven days a week to, nine, to 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. So you can come see us, you know, during the week, no wait, you know. So all my out of towners, if you come visit us, Expect a little line and it's going to get busy. Yeah. Yeah. If you're local, definitely come in on the weekday. You're going to get the same great service and you're not going to have to wait. Yeah. Especially with the holidays coming up. Get ready. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Thanks again.